winning connections of this year's Kentucky Derby, the 140th Kentucky Derby. We'll start from uh, my right, Art Sherman, the winning trainer. Thank you. Now the, I'm not sure how much you love this, but you are the oldest man ever to sign <laughs> on a Kentucky Derby winner. Let's get that one out of the way right now. <laughs> and a nice book in from a trip you made here back in 1955 with Swaps. Oh, wow. it's, 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 it's been an amazing, a long haul, I can tell you. An amazing that. story. Winning Good. jockey Victor Espinosa, his second Kentucky Derby victory. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And one half of the partnership that owned and uh, that owns and, and bred the Kentucky Derby winner, this is Steve Coburn right here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I never thought I'd say this, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, half of the dumbass partners right here. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got? There we go. Oh. There you go, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's after 12 here, so. Well, since, since Steve is occupied for the moment, let's go ahead and get started. Let, let's, let's start with Victor and the yes, trip. Sir. Looked like you were in a perfect spot all the way around, and um, kind of looked like the Oaks yesterday when, when, when you asked the question at the head of the stretch, he was gone. Yes, um, I mean, I want to just get out of that runner. Uh, in the beginning, as soon as out of the gate, basically, um, and and I I see myself a little bit in front, <laughs> and for a second I almost just make that decision just to let it go in the front, but I saw one horse in, in, inside and then the other one outside of me. They they were like, you know, trying to take the lead. So I at that point I I make a decision. They like just ease back just a little little bit, and uh, you know just you know sit right there and behind the, like third. But <laughs> right by the wire, and then and then and then suddenly I see the ones that outside. Everybody was coming. I was like, oh, now they got, I got trapped a little bit in there. And and for a couple of minutes, uh, you know, I mean seconds basically, no minutes, <laughs> seconds. <laughs> it seems like it's two minutes. <laughs> uh, I was really a little bit, uh, uh, you know, concerned, and my heart started going like 100 miles an hour because I don't want to be trapped in there. I wanted him to let it run his race. And I, but and I had to slowly move out just a little bit and outside the, the, the those two horses in, in, in front. And when I hit the first turn, you know, it was my head, uh, the my horse head, it was just outside a little bit from the front horses, and and that was it. I was like, <laughs> what a relief, you know. Now I can breathe and I can relax and I can let him stretch his legs. And and I think I, I win the race in there. By Kentucky Derby standards, the pace was not fast i mean get kind of a moderate pace were you, were you feeling that on his back that they weren't going that fast down the back stretch yes uh, uh, for sure i mean uh, i feel that like uh, i i thought the other horses in the lead they want to go a little bit quicker than that you know and then when everybody slowed down and i was like you know what <laughs> i had to just you know a lot of things go into my mind i don't know when a couple of like tenths of a second <laughs> I don't even know what I was thinking about at that point. <laughs> I was just more worried where I am concerned about uh, California Crow and then he just do his thing. And, and then he take a little bit like breed on the backside, you know, from the five ace pole, he just like kind of like a little bit shut down a little bit. And, and I really like that. And I, I was like, at that point I was like, this is going great. So everything, you know, just work out an, an amazing uh, an amazing race. And, and this horse, it just has so much talent that, that I mean, I tell you, when by the three ace pole, I thought that was it. I the way he was going so strong. They, I know they're all the ones outside and all the run horses and me that I like. Then I can, you know, see them. They like struggle a little bit, and him it's just like smooth. Turn him, turn him from home. I let it go. He could drop the ground a little bit, and that was it. Been a little while since that first Derby win, and, uh, but you obviously savored that one for a while. Does this one feel? I know it's early. You've just won it, but is it? Any different feeling? This one any sweeter coming back to do it again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think this one is more exciting for me than the last one. <laughs> last one I was young, and it really, you know, uh, I was kind of shocked too. <laughs> and the <laughs> last minute, the, the the my owner that I was riding for, the prince, uh, he bought a horse for for me to ride it in the derby, and and I never thought in a million years that I was gonna win that. And um, but yeah, this one, you know, I I'm telling you after the Santa Anita Derby. You know, a couple nights after that, I can't even sleep. <laughs> I was like really, really <laughs> excited and l looking forward for this horse. And, and I thought that, um, I mean, if everything it was going well, then I can have my second derby. I, it's just an amazing. I, I remember that I was, you know, I started dating um, my girlfriend and, and, and she, like, she told me, it's like, 
You need to win one more. It's like, oh, man, I'm ready to retire now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. You got two more races yeah. sure. <laughs> and, and I think thanks to her, just like motivate myself more, you know, just to like push myself a little bit more. And, and, uh, and uh, you know what? Uh, it was just, you know, it's like a dream now. They win the second one. <laughs> Let's go to the youngster next to you, Art Sherman, uh -huh. who, uh, again, the record set here. And I, get, I heard an interview, I guess, during the NBC telecast. You, when you were here in 55 with Swaps as the exercise rider, you were 18, is that correct? Yes. And you, you, but you didn't come over to the front side to watch no, the No, I was in the back side watching it. Pull the mic just well, a little bit closer to you. So you're on the back side watching. So watching it's a, the race, yeah. It's a, that's a lot. Pretty good size bookends from. Oh, back to you bet, here. you bet. You know, it's uh, such a different ball game now. You know what I mean? Uh, with all the years that you put in, and of course, I can understand Victor. Twenty-three years riding myself. You know, I, I had that feeling for him too. You know, saying, "All right, Victor, you're in a perfect spot. Just cool it, wait, and see what happens." You're now nobody's in your way when you push on the button. I hope you got something left in the tank. You know. And he run his eyeballs out. He, he's really a super nice horse to train. And I appreciate the owners for giving me a chance. You know, there was a lot of other trainers out there, and they picked me. So I'm really happy for that. It tastes pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. How great was it? I mean, he was running comfortably, perfect spot. But, but when he did spurt away, I mean. Oh, wow. When he spurt away, I said, now let me take over for the last 70 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to uh, to the man nearest me, Steve Coburn, half of the, half of the partnership that bred this horse, and, and now is, now is not only owns a Kentucky Derby winner, but has bred a Kentucky Derby winner. And given the nature of, of your investment in yes. this horse, I mean, yes. given the fact you live in California, and you no, live I live in Nevada. My partner live, lives in California. Well, the horse yeah. is bred in California, yes. so I'm yes. guessing several film treatments will be awaiting you on uh, Monday or Tuesday <laughs> of of your story here, but. Uh, You've lived it. What, how incredible is this? Well, I don't know how many times I've said this because I've been so talking since the plane hit here last Tuesday. But, you know, it, it's an incredible, incredible journey that we've been on. <clears throat> Excuse me. To see this baby the day after he was born alive. And then I saw him three weeks prior to that in a dream. And this baby turned out exactly like my dream. And to watch this colt come up and grow and develop and develop the mind that he has and run, just run because he loves to run. He loves the competition. He loves to run. To see all this happen for my partner, Perry Martin, and our wives and our families, to see this dream come true that we have put so much blood, sweat, and tears our savings, our retirement, into this horse, and see this horse win the Kentucky Derby. I, 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 I have no words. I really have no words of how I feel right now, except that <clears throat> we've got another California bred that won the Kentucky Derby. And, uh, and like I said the other day in that press, con press conference right here at this table, I said, not only would it be great for Dumbass Partners, DAP Racing, but it would be very special to see that brass ring on the merry-go-round come together and turn to gold, and Art Sherman reached out there and got it. And ladies and gentlemen, Art Sherman reached out there and got it today. So this man has come full circle. God bless you, Art, for doing what you've done for this horse. And you never thought that list that Perry gave you, the road to the oh, Kentucky yeah. Derby, would work, did you? I'll tell you one thing, you got somebody upstairs watching you really well. <laughs> yes, I do. I've got somebody very special up there watching us. Before we open up for questions, there's one more for Mr. Coburn. Yes. One would assume you'll be moving on to Pimlico in two weeks <laughs> for the Preakness. And your thoughts on, you've been confident with this horse all along? You've yes. You've won this race as you expected to do. Well, what, what now? Well, you know, I, I said this horse would win the Kentucky Derby. And I said, if this horse... When he wins, I never said if, I said when this horse wins the Kentucky Derby, I believe this horse will win the Triple Crown. And I'm going to tell everybody right here and right now, and if I shed a tear, just bear with me, okay? This colt was born on my sister Brenda's birthday, February 18th. 
she died of cancer at age 36. It'll be 36 years this year since there's been a triple crown winner. And I told people, I said, this colt would go down in history. And if this colt, when he wins the triple crown, he will be the first California bred to ever win a triple crown. And that's where we're going. This colt is going to fly first class, but my wife and I probably fly coach again. <laughs> hey, what about me? Did I be able to fly? Yeah, you can go with the horse. <laughs> Private jet? <laughs> Ladies and that's and how I feel about it, right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the media, your headlines are written, but let's go. Let's open it up for questions now. Who's uh, Tim right here? Art, you said the other day that uh, you were a guy who had flown under the radar. Do you feel differently now? Do you think you've changed your life? Uh, I don't think I changed my life. It's, it's puts, it puts something up with all my friends that aren't with me anymore and I, I think they're watching over me right now and said hey we all wish you the best of luck Art we didn't last this long to be with you but I said <coughs> I'm so thankful you know that I'm here and uh, I don't think I change any much more you know I have a lot of friends on the racetrack been around a long time and I'm just the same old Art Sherman, you know. Uh, except I won the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. M Mr. Colburn, you said yes, a few weeks back that he's a California bred, but he don't know that. Are you going to tell him, or is it going to be a secret? I really don't think he cares. I tried... Everybody else has been trying to tell him, the media, the, you know, all the sports writers and so on and so forth. They, they never gave this horse any credence. You know, he's a California bred. They don't do this. They don't do that. Well, guess what? He don't know he's a California bred, and I don't care if he knows it or not. But he is who he is, and he's a great horse. He's a very good horse. He's got a sharp mind, and he listens to this guy. So I, I know he speaks two languages. He's bilingual, Mexican and English. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Not very well English, but <laughs> he's still, young, he's still learning. Still learning too. I'm still learning too. Well, this is for Art. Art uh, all week long in the backstretch to here, there were a lot of rival trainers that really didn't believe in your horse, and some of them were talking after the race tonight. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they had to eat crow. What did you think about people that? did not believe in your horse going into this race? Well, you know, sometimes you don't get a lot of respect. You know, we're in Kentucky, and you know most of the derby winners are bred here, and you know very few outside of Kentucky. And when you get a California bred horse that hadn't, you know, I think it was 40 years since decidedly won the last one. And I think they say, well, you didn't beat nobody. You know what I mean? But there was a lot of good horses in the Santa Anita Derby. You know, you had an opportunity. I, would, I felt so bad for Mike P. Grimm and that, you know, you, you know, you get so close for this race and something can happen, you know. So I know how lucky I am, and uh, I just feel like, hey, let's go. I'm ready for the next race. Uh, questions for Mr. Coburn. Everybody knows about the $6 million offer at this point. You mentioned also, you mentioned a little earlier, some financial, financial hardships, taking a big risk, retirement. Can you give us an idea of how big of a risk you took from the beginning with this whole enterprise? Uh, well, I hope I heard you. I'm hard of hearing and I apologize, but I hope I heard you right. Uh, yes, we were offered $6 million for 51% of this whole horse controlling interest. That means they would have been running under their colors, gone to a new trainer, and we would have been out in the background. They'd probably move the horse out of the state of California, out of his home track, which is Los Alamitos, California, which he loves. Thanks, Doc Allred. But anyhow, uh, it wasn't tough for us to say no because we knew, we knew within our souls what kind of horse we had because we've seen him grow up. We've seen him achieve these things. We've seen him get hit across the nose and still lose the race by only two links. You know, we've seen him jump the gate and still only lose the race by two links. He had all that heart. 
And we knew we had something special, like I said, from day one. But he showed us really how special he was when he started moving up at these different races. And when everybody said after he won the San Felipe Stakes, that was a fluke. And they turned around in four weeks and kicked the hell out of him in the Santa Anita Derby in an open company. It wasn't a fluke. I think people kind of woke up and smoked, started smelling the roses. No pun intended, but you know. <laughs> But yeah, we're smelling roses. We're very, very happy th of the outcome, you know. And I, like I said, I, I'm speaking for both my partner and myself that this has been a long, hard road. But we've been blessed. We've been blessed with this colt and the trainer that we have that took the time, took the patience, and put this colt on the path that we had written out for him. So, yeah, we're blessed. We really are. We're blessed. I can't, I can't say any more than that. <clears throat> Over here, Claire Novak. All right, this is a question for you. Tim had mentioned people who kind of didn't believe in your horse. At any point throughout this week being here in Louisville, were you concerned? Um, did you start to lose any confidence or worry at all, or were you just confident going into the race that you knew you had a good horse? Three. I was very confident. You know, I've been around a long time. I've seen some fabulous horses throughout my life. And you know when you have a good horse. You know, we all know that bad racing luck can happen to you. You know, I, <coughs> I've been on that end of it too. And I knew my horse could run. And I knew he'd be the horse to beat once we got him here. Lenny Shulman over here. Mr. Coburn, could you talk a little bit more about your dream, uh, about what was in that dream and, and how it came to actuality, please? Well, about three weeks prior to the Colts' birth, I had a dream, and I woke up and I told my wife, I said, I had a dream, and she said, about what? And I said, about the baby. I said, I believe it's going to be a big chestnut colt with four white stock and feet and a big blaze face. We drove over, we saw him the day after he was born, and she walked up to that birthing stall and looked in there, and she says, Stephen, come here. There's your dream. There's your dream. And that dream became the dream that we have today. And we held on to that dream, and I've said it a hundred times or a thousand times. You got a dream. If you're willing to ride the dream out, they will come true for you. They will come true, and we're, we're living proof of it. My partner and I, I got to go back to work Wednesday morning. So Wednesday morning, I'll get up 4.30, pull my boots on, after I pull my britches up, and then I'll go to work. <coughs> no. At least you have a couple of days off. I have to go to work tomorrow. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you're sorry for me, <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I know Victor a long time. He rode a lot of winners for me in Northern California, where I trained for a lot of years, and I knew he had a lot of talent. We needed to make a change at one time, and I said I got the perfect jock for this race too. So here we are, and I hope we have a great time with this horse you know he he fits him like a glove he knows him and you know he knows where to position the horse and it means a lot you know it, it's a rapport between rider and horse it really I is it it's like a talk <laughs> yeah i have a question for victor um you, you talked earlier about your previous experience riding in this race and how you kind of know where the trouble spots are now going into the next step, you've, you've got a lot of experience there, too. Um, can you talk about, in your mind, what the next step is and what you're thinking about, how this horse needs to be, what you kind of anticipate in the next step? A lot of things, you know, it, it goes through my mind before the race and break out of the gate. And, and it's not easy. I mean, every single time and every step run the horse it makes around the racetrack is just uh, a decision that I had to make and you know sometimes you know f hope 
for the best that I can make the right decision for for him and put it in, in, in the race in the right spot. It's a little bit, well, it's not really easy, but it's a little bit more easy for me than the first time I ever rode. The first time I rode, I kind of, you know, it was just too much for me, <laughs> to be honest. But um, uh, now it's a little bit more easy that I can make my decisions quick. Before it, the first race that I rode, and uh, the Kentucky, the first time I rode the Kentucky Derby, I was a little bit afraid to make my own decisions to you know, make a decision on the race to put the horse in a position because I was afraid that was the wrong, you know, decision. Now it's more easy if he's wrong, then, you know, I don't, I can't do anything about it. I had to react quick. And, but uh, besides that, I just want to mention one thing that, um, that I always, you know, been for all the cancer people. I support that. I, um, one day I went to, uh, a city hope, which is in LA, for all the kids that have cancer, and and I can't even go in there. I really like I cry. I b I went back and and since that time, <coughs> I'd been donated all ten percent of my earnings for for everybody, for all the kids that um they have cancer. Sorry, I it make me cry to see all the kids that they can't even have a life like we have. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, bro. It's okay. But um, yeah. So I, I, it changed my life. See those kids that are like seven, eight, ten years old, twenty years old that they don't know what's life about it. And I hope today with more earnings that I have, that I make a change to um, to one of those kids that don't, they don't know anything about life. So, I never cry, I only cry for the <laughs> for this thing, but yeah, um, um, it's just heartbreaking to everybody, and I hope I, I make a change for for this Kentucky Derby the win, to have more earnings for the kids that have cancer. I see you hope. Gentlemen, back here in the back, and then we'll then we'll hang out with Heather Ron. We're going to go here. Uh, this is for Art and Victor. Uh, a few days ago, you told us, Art, that you're old school. You don't like to talk a whole lot beforehand. You like to prove your actions. So, what did you both think when your co-owner just said he thinks this horse is going to win the Triple Crown? What went through your mind? I'm not saying anything now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a dream, and I'm. I want to tell you something. <laughs> I think California Chrome is the rock star, and I'm his manager, and I'm going all the way. <laughs> Victor, your, your thoughts on that question? Triple what was that question? <laughs> Oh, um, I, you know what? I just go day by day. Um, I mean, uh, I think um, I was still an hour day. You know what? Now I have a lot of pressure <laughs> for the <laughs> next step. <laughs> but, I mean, it, we all had dreams. And, you know, I've been there very close the last time. Uh, I was just one step away. And, you know, I hopefully, you know, with a little bit of luck and, you know, I just, you know, go there race by race. Ron Platter. I'll ask the drummer to the rock star. Victor, um, could you compare this, tell me the, uh, the similarities and the differences between this and War Emblem when you wired it in 2002? Well, one thing is different. They have the board, two different horses. Uh, I mean, one is different color, actually, first of all. <laughs> 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 and the difference for him, he, they're all tremendous talent. But he, um, War Emblem, he was... It was an amazing horse, and uh, and one way to go, it was just front lead, and that was it. Uh, and I had to just let it go in the front. For this guy, I have a lot of options. <laughs> he can go either way, you know. He can go in front and behind. Uh, you know, that's just a matter. So make my job a little bit easy, and I, and also not that much stress, <laughs> like with War Amelo. I remember when we going War Amelo going to the Prignis. Uh, it was just really stressful because. 
there was a lot of speed in the race and 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 i can't do anything you know i just had to just let it go and and this guy you know like i said he's he has tremendous talent too and and he can go in front and behind and and they make my job more easy uh for steve you've been watching a certain race replay a couple times here yeah. i'm just wondering what's going through <coughs> your head watching it. uh <coughs> Our dream child doing exactly what we thought he could do when he was a baby. You know, I'm watching how, I'm watching this <laughs> horse and I'm watching how relaxed he is up there. And then when he's asked to do his job, he does his job. And I'm also looking at the time, 2.03 and 3. I don't, you know, I don't really care what the track record is. All I know is my horse won the Kentucky Derby today. <laughs> uh, excuse me, our horse, me and Perry Martin. I, I apologize, Perry, if you're listening. <laughs> Me and Perry, our horse, the DAP Racing, won the Kentucky Derby today. One back here. Uh, first, I think I, I heard you say in a conference call earlier, uh, Mr. Coburn, that today was your birthday. Yeah, correct? I turned 61 today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank what, you. What kind of present was this to have on your birthday? Pardon me? What kind of present was this to have on your birthday? Well, I've, it, it was probably the best one so far. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. Have one question for Mr. Sherman. You were spotted over visiting Swap's grave earlier this week. What were you thinking when you were over there? Well, you know, I went, <coughs> said a little prayer, and I said, hey, I thought he was a super horse, Swap's, you know, he had six world records at one time, and I says, hey, just let me have half your talent and put it into chrome i'd be the happiest guy in the world the side note swaps is buried at the kentucky derby museum next to yes. the derby winners there front row art uh you didn't give victor instructions according to your television interview you claimed that the <laughs> horse is the rock star what was your impact on california chrome what were you able to do with it well <clears throat> california chrome it's an easy horse to train, you know? And I give a lot of credit to my son, Alan. He's my backbone, he watches the horse all the time, you know? Trainers now, <clears throat> you know, at this stage of my life, you know, I'm, I'm, I got both my sons who are great trainers. I got Steve in Northern California and, and Alan. It's a family affair, you know what I mean? I, they got my back and they do a lot of the hard work for me now, you know? they. They look to see that everything is done perfect, and they're both great horsemen, and I give them a lot of credit. You know, I, I feel really proud of them. All right, Tim Lake. My impact? Well, I just let him be a horse, you know. They always told me, oh, you're only going a half a mile with him. Geez, you're going to run in the derby. You're going to do this. You're going to... I know the horse. I've been on many a horse. And you don't train every horse the same way. You got to let a horse tr tell you what he needs to do. You know, he's running back in a month. He just run a mile and eighth. And it was just maintenance work. You know, the Triple Crown is probably the roughest races you'll ever have to face. You know, you got two weeks to the Preakness. Oof. Then you have to go a mile and a half at Belmont, which is... I've seen a lot of champions go by the wayside, you know, so I got to keep my fingers crossed and, and hope I can have a fresh horse for them t type of races. Tim Lake? Hey, are assuming the horse comes out okay and you do go on to Pimlico, are you going to ship to California then come back to Maryland with a no. short time? Frame? Absolutely not. You can't do that. You know, I'll just give him a rest over here. I got a perfect place. You know, Tom Proctor's been excellent guy been a good friend of mine and I got a spot right here in Kentucky Churchill Downs I can leave him here for a week take my time let him unwind and what is it a four or five hour van ride that's One it hour flight. we'll see what happens <laughs> you know all right over here on the side Art, right, you've talked about um, doing things a little differently than other trainers also you know you train at Los Alamitos um, you've got a small mom and pop operation and what do you think this says that it doesn't have to be done in the super barn um, kind of approach well I want to tell you something the quarter horse people I, I've never seen him you know that they're having a tough time now 
to survive in this game. And, and you know, they w welcomed us open arms, you know, to help their meat and have the quarter horses run at night and the thoroughbreds in the daytime. You know, I can't tell you how I feel when I see all these guys. They text me. I, yesterday I must have had 40 texts from Orange County. You know, that's where we're stabled at Los Alamitas. And the owner of that track, of course I train horses for him. And I'm not, but Doc goes out of his way to <clears throat> make you feel like you're welcomed, you know. And, and I, I give him a lot of credit for keeping the industry alive in California. I really do. All right, these gentlemen have a mint julep toast awaiting. We'll have one more question, Frank Ang. Uh, Mr. Coburn, along those lines, how big is this win for California breeding of thoroughbreds? Honestly, I think this is huge for California breeding. I really, really do because there's a lot of good mares in California and there's a lot of good sires that people overlook. There's a, you know, even though the price tag on breeding to some of these sires isn't like, like it is in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Kentucky or anywhere else, there are some good horses out there. And all you've got to do is go back more than four generations. You go back a little bit further and look at them bloodlines and see who they were back then and watch where they're coming to right now. And if all the moons and the stars in the universe line up, you can get a horse just like we have. And uh, I, get, I don't know how many of y'all know this, but this horse has got swaps in his bloodline, both top and bottom. So this horse that he was an exercise rider for is in this colt's bloodlines. Before we turn you loose, Art, what time are you going to be at the barn in the morning? <laughs> the I'll be checking legs again. You know, the <laughs> last time I won the San Anita Derby, I couldn't sleep. And I said, man, i got to go over and check his knees and ankles. I got there about 2 o'clock in the morning and <laughs> took the bandages off. And my groom thought somebody was messing with the horse. He ran out there and he says, what are you doing here? And I says, I want to tell you, I couldn't sleep. I had to go make sure. You know, they tell me, oh, the horse pulled up good and, you know, I my son and there but I'll tell you you get a horse like this and and you might lose a little sleep at night <laughs> <laughs> well, can you give us a reasonable time <laughs> where, where, where you might accept visitors no, I'll, I'll, I'll be there probably by no later than five o'clock <laughs> No later than five. <laughs> yeah. Will you be there at seven let me ask the question they will. oh yeah seven o'clock seven o'clock is that good yeah. good good that's uh, <laughs> we knew we'd get you there Steve Yes, before we cut off here, I would like to thank my wife, Carolyn, for telling me, no, you cannot buy an airplane, because that's why we got into this horse racing business. So, honey, thank you very much, okay? <laughs> All right. They may not need an airplane after this. <laughs> winners of the 140th Kentucky Derby from Los Alamitos to the winner's circle at Churchill Down. <laughs> Our Thank you, guys. Victor Espinosa, half of DAP partner Steve Coburn.